can't guarantee, but it's every, every indication says yes. So I'm going to call the meeting of the Willington Board of Education, regular board meeting on January 8th, 2019, to order at 7.07 p.m. We have time at the beginning of the agenda for present to speak, where speakers will be recognized. You can identify yourself by name and address. And uh, we ask that you only limit your comments to five minutes. But if there's anyone here who'd like to comment. Okay, listeners for now. We do have time at the end of the agenda for present to speak in case you change your mind and feel so moved. So moving on to communications. Phil? Mm -hmm. So one, a biggie. Patty Locke. I received a retirement letter from Patty Locke. She is the principal secretary at Center School. She will be retiring at the end of the year. She is going to be sorely missed, I can guarantee that. She has worked at Center School since 1985. Wow. She has had a tremendous career there. So numerous administrators. She's one of the friendly faces you see when you walk into the office. She's one of those folks answering the phones. Um, and so she's just a wealth of knowledge and she's going to be extremely hard to replace. I accepted her letter of, of retirement for the end of the year. Obviously we wish her luck. Um, and for me personally, because I worked directly with her for, for seven years as principal, she's just a dynamite person and, and we wish her the best. Okay, moving on to Board of Education Chairman's report. Um, in your packets, we did provide you an updated list of the committees. Um, we will be setting some dates for committee meetings. We postponed the need for a policy committee we were supposed to have met before this meeting, but since Elena is away, we will schedule something for later this month, and this will have a date there too. So um, we will check in with folks um, about that at the end of the meeting. But otherwise, I think that's all I have on my list. Yep. I'm also trying to get curriculum to me too, so okay. Like that. So we'll get to that. Okay, then moving on to number five, superintendent reports. All right, lengthy list here. So uh, welcome, Rich Napoli and, and Marshall McGinley. We uh, two two new admin administrators, one principal center school, uh, pupil services director. We had uh, a nice lunch. I bought them lunch as a as a welcome last week um, for our administrators meeting. And we had the transition period between Holly and um, Mary Beth going out from Center School and Pupil Services. So uh, hopefully with the, the three-hour meeting we had that we didn't overwhelm them with all of the items that we're working on um, and expectations. Lots of really good questions and we look forward to working with them um, in, in the coming months here. They have set, and I apologize, I don't have the date on me, I have it in my calendar. They set a meet and greet, so they're going to do a meet and greet for, for parents and families and community members. I will get that date out to you, so if you're interested in going. Um, just a chance for people to come and say hi. That's not, you know, meeting at the school board if you drop your child off or you're going into a, a PPT. It's just a chance to chat before. <coughs> so, uh, that would be good. All right, EduTrack six month update. So, EduTrack is the online built uh, play system we use uh, and that we adopted and it coordinates with Wordware. Wordware is the lunch system. It's how, what you know kids go through. It's how they, they select what they're, they're um, purchasing. And as of Friday, we had over 200 deposits made using the EduTrack system, which is approximately 50 deposits a month since we started. And it's approximately $13,000 that's been deposited using the program. So that's pretty impressive. It's good. Um, we have, we just expanded the use of the program and we started utilizing it to collect money for field trips. It's, that's a little bit slower. Um, and uh, also select chorus jackets. I think we had five or six kids buy their jackets on, online using the EduTrack system. Um, I wanted to share, so you know, uh, I'm, I'm always evaluating things, and one of the pieces that we're disappointed with, um, EduTrack, I held them to their contract because there's something, and, and Tish has done, Tish Nadowitz has done a great job, I've worked with her really closely on this, um, they charge a, a certain fee, and in our contract it said there would be no other additional fees beyond what we knew we were going to pay. We were getting monthly bills in the monthly statements, 
with more fees and we questioned it. And so, you know those amazing high mileage cards you have, the credit cards you have, and you can earn points on? Well, guess who pays for that? The person selling the stuff. So if you go to Olympia Sports and you use your high mileage card and you spend $100, Olympia Sports is getting hit with an extra fee to allow you to use that credit card. We are now experiencing that. So, we, obviously we complained about it um, because it's not in our contract. They are reimbursing us this year for those extra fees. Um, and we're looking to see if there's a way to minimize it in the future. You can't say, hey, we only ex you know, will accept these certain credit cards. Um, what's the one? That, uh, there's one. Can you, can you hear American, American Express, boy, the charges, they hit you five times over if you use an American Express card. Mm -hmm. So we may be limiting, limiting to MasterCard Visa um, and we also might be limiting maximum amounts. And the reason why maximum amounts, um, we establish the transaction <coughs> fee for lunch services. We charge $2.50 per transaction if you're putting money onto your lunch account. The issue is, if someone deposits $25 and we charge them $2.50 on top of that, we get charged a dollar. So I'm going to say there's an extra dollar fifty. But if someone puts on it, you're looking, just wait for it, Kiara. You, you didn't like that, I know. I don't like it either. But if someone puts on $250, we charge them $2.50. We get charged $7.70. You can't, you can change your flat fee or you can do a percentage. The good news is, Right now, our fees are pretty sound because we know we are only um, we're about twenty dollars per month to use the program on top of the twenty dollars that we pay to you for the program. That's pretty strong. So, for the first time using this, we may need to adjust our fees a little bit, um, and we may need to adjust a maximum amount that can be put on so we don't lose. Five dollars and twenty cents, or whatever it is, um, if someone puts on, and we have had people put two and three hundred dollars on their, you know, if you have two or three kids on a lunch account, you just put it on, and you know, you don't have to worry about it. Um, so it's it's been it's been working well. The wordware portion has been working well. It remember the purpose of this program is to get cash and checks out of the hands of our staff members. You know, let them do what they're supposed to be doing, working with kids. <coughs> not having to count money, they have to count, if they get cash in, they have to count themselves, they have to count it in front of the secretary, the secretary's got to count it in front of the principal, the principal's got to sign off and goes to, it's just quite a process and it's saving time. So the money we're spending for the program really is making up for hours we're saving staff from doing this. Would we ever be able to get away from cash entirely now? Boy, I hope so. Oh, um, I didn't know. Not Everyone entirely, not entirely, but it will it will make a big difference. If the you know the smaller amounts that we're dealing with, the better. Um, it's just it makes more sense to do it that way. The field trips we're charging exact amounts that we're charged. So if you get a twenty dollar field trip, we're not charging you two dollars and fifty cents on top of that. We're charged the way it's work. It works is we're charged 2.98% plus a quarter. We factor that now into the field trip price. So we're not you know, overcharging a parent for a field trip. We're charging, if they're gonna pay online, they're gonna pay exactly what? So it's a wash. It's the, the lunch program that's more challenging. So in the lunch program, we have about 50% of we, our students and parents involved. Using it, I think right now we have 49 users that have used the program. Um, I can't see the data about the users. So there are 49 different users. I don't know right now if it's heavier. I probably could get into the data and look to see if it's heavier at Hall School or Center. Um, but again, that's hard to tell too because if they have two kids, they might have both. But there are consistent people using the program. Um, which is good. So, 
It's also good to get the hands out of the, the money out of the hands of the children. Absolutely. Lost money and they hit the school money. store, and then the phone call comes <laughs> into the principal who says, "Where's the lunch?" Right. Money? Fifty dollars <laughs> came in, and they. Child bought their friend all sorts of toys at the school <laughs> store and only 20 minutes of lunch. It happens. So it, it just streamlines the process. Questions about EduTrack and Wordware? It's going well. We are going to continue to monitor this. Good. Okay, moving along. All right, so I gave you a draft, and this is simply a draft. Um, you had tasked me with this spring, once we hired administrators, to start looking into reviewing the facility study again and talking about a process for the facility study uh, and, and really to engage the public in discussion about the options uh, and learn about you know 21st century education standards and expectations of what classrooms should look like. I did a raw draft here of some of the things that you see other places do, and this is prior to a vote, this is getting the word out, collecting information about what people, how they feel about um, a, a building project or, or needed status quo. You're collecting as much information and sharing as much information as possible. So if I go down there, um, February would be an initial presentation of the prior report. Again, that's just all the different options. Keep it simple, it's that one page document. A projected facility repair cost, go through the actual 25 CIP requests that we've submitted mm -hmm. and talk about how that impacts this, this uh, decision. Uh, and then the plan for conservation and, de uh, con did I say conversation? <laughs> conservation and development and going through that because that is supposed to guide our town of where we're going. Mm -hmm. And there's pieces in there about development and making decisions about schools. And so that would be uh, a first kind of engaging night. It could include all of those things. March, community engagement event of some sort, and, and it would be connected, I would see, to a town survey of options. This is something that Mansfield did. And they basically, they mailed to all households a survey. And they collect as much information as they could gather about how people felt about the, the school system, um, how they felt about a building project, it was all sorts of things. Hello? Um, and so they used that data, they collected all that data for quite a while, they gave lots of uh, avenues to submit that data, and then they distributed out the information. Um, and so during that process, they also started to collect ideas of what people's priorities were, what are they looking for in their school district, and then you can start to have, you know, discuss how you would achieve that. April, uh, learning about 21st century classrooms. What does the classroom now look like? Is it, uh, you know, is it a bunch of rows of desks? It is not. Another idea that came from Mansfield here: small group conversations. They hosted a load of small group con um, conversations. They collected all the data in Google Docs, and they merged all the data. And basically, they had meeting places consistently throughout the town. Um, and where people could talk and notes were, you know, they just kept notes and they submitted their information. Uh, I also think you have to have at some point a question and answer event as part of that so that, you know, people can ask their questions and share information or you can point to, this is where you can find it. Mansfield, I don't have it on here. Mansfield's got all their meeting minutes, all of their videos, all of their questionnaires on one page, on a web page. All the information is right there. Um, it's a little hard to look at, I would fix that, um, but all the information is there and I think that's important for people to know. June reviews, small group conversations, and again, this is just a draft, things can be moved around. July, notifi notification of serving uh, conservation data, dis uh, conversation, boy, no, yeah. data distributed, and so we would be just sharing out, here's what we found, here's what the townsfolk have said, here's information from the small group conversations, as well as the survey. Um, and then August is kind of open at this point, depending on what you need to do. Uh, and then I said option approval. You may decide based upon the feedback that you get that people just want to keep two schools. And they want to, you know, continue with capital improvement projects. You're already on that path. 
It just, there's no bonding to it. I think that's how it's presented as an option, is that it's, you know, $20 million to continue to fix up the schools. No one says that has to be done in a year, it could be over time. So if there's any approval, uh, and then if I try to, uh, I talked to Eric about this, trying to do a vote, if there went to a vote, that would it'd be at a time where people would already be through the, the building, and there's a vote in November. And if you are up in that vote, uh, or for re-election. So the, I started a, a list of reports that I thought would be important. Uh, the survey results, new school placement options, a feasibility report. I think sometimes people say, oh, there's a great spot on 32 down on so-and-so. It's not feasible, and here's why. It's not big enough, or there's swamp, or, you know, okay. it would be good to rule out some of those things so people aren't having conversations that can't happen. Um, also, uh, I think it's, it would be important, too, and it's not really on here, is I think that uh, there's got to be a report that connects to the options that talks about it. I think we've heard several times people just say, put them all in Paul School. Of why you cannot simply put them all in Paul School. That you have to do renovations to do that. And it can't come from, in my opinion, the board. I think it needs to come from an architect of why, who is going to follow the law for what you're required to do for elementary students. Um, so there's another piece of that. And then tax implications. Is another thing I think would be important to share. Thoughts, comments, this is going to be a working document. I think what I'd like to do is get your feedback on this, both if you have anything tonight, but also, um, you know, if you shoot me an email, you want to come in and talk over the next, you know, you think about it, and we have budget meetings coming up, and you want to share some ideas, we can move things around. Um, I will continue to develop this. Um, it's just meant to be a draft to, to share some of the ideas. Um, those small group conversations that they had in Mansfield, mm -hmm. over what period of time? Is that done all in one month, in a couple of months? I think they basically set like a four week period, four to six week period, and they just, you know, constant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And were those non facilitated? They were just, you know, the neighbors got together and had a conversation and set the information in, Good or was it? S these were facilitated, and okay. facilitated basically meaning note taker, not guiding conversations, mm -hmm. but you're responsible for taking notes. Yes. Okay. I will also tell you that um, Mansfield spent some money on this process. And we're trying to do it without putting some money towards it. You're using my hours to do this. <coughs> Mansfield hired uh, a, a company. It's not even a company. It's I just worked with her. She, we're doing some, some uh, emailing back and forth about uh, the portrait of a graduate. Uh, they facilitated several evenings of their process. So it wasn't the superintendent facilitating and collecting feedback. Um, Steven said his her last name. Well, we've already spent money on, on this. $15,000 mm -hmm. to fry her, I think, mm -hmm. initially. Yeah. Report. And they did as well. They spent money on a, on a report for from an architect as well. So the, the options that we have, and I guess we've discussed those extensively previously for this meeting. Correct. So I think everyone's aware of, of what they are. We haven't really uh, established a point where we know which one we're we're interested in. I agree 100%. On, on the list that you gave us here, it's not until near the very end of this process that we're going through that the board would uh, approve one of the options in the board. Correct. Yeah. It took me to also there's no money to be involved in this. No. At this point in time, there's, there's no CIP dollars. CIP money. Uh, for this process? So, so this process we just uh, meetings. Correct. And giving and receiving information. This is what it is. Seems like it's basically a nine-month study process. Yeah, they took they took a solid six, seven months. Um, and remember, with facilitators, that makes a difference. Uh, to go through the process from start, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I talked to a parent who who has 
built he built the new Newtown school. He works for their architectural firm, and I was asking for feedback as far as building up to the process. If he knew anyone, trying to get some more information. Um, but Mansfield is a very different community. I think they went through a, a really solid process, but it's going to take a lot of information, sharing information and ideas and knowledge of what will work or not work just to get the information to, to make your decision. Not saying new school, not saying, you know, demolish something, that's uh, nothing. Just giving information, saying this is, you know, what are we hoping for for our educational system and buildings in town? Um, what do we want for our 100-year-old building? You know, how do we want to handle that? So. It's important that we educate the community and ultimately let them make the decision. So well, that they know what all the this isn't are. their decision, though. This is the Board of Ed's decision to decide whether or not we want to pass it back to the town to establish a building committee. This is a town-wide decision, mm -hmm. and it will eventually go to them in the town referendum. That's where they get yeah. to weigh in on a vote, and then there will be other votes in the future if, that, if this were to continue. But this process is more of kind of a collaborative study process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we will make a decision as the board if we want to take it to the next step. We don't get to decide ourselves, it goes to the town. So we get to decide, this is what we're gonna recommend you know, mm -hmm. to but the I next step. So it's, is important it is, it's process. just really important that we're clear of who has decision-making authority in which places right. and what that decision is. So the decision we have on here in September mm -hmm. is just our recommendation for which option we think we we would recommend to the town for the town to establish a building committee. Right. So it's, it, this is not our vote to say right. we're going ahead and this is what we're doing. That's not our choice. We're, get, we're part of the town structure and we'd give it to the town. We would be a part of that process. They're not going to do that without us. Mm -hmm. But just to be clear kind of where the decisions are and what the decisions on here mean. And I think that would probably, what you just said, I just wrote down as a bullet and probably needs to be number one is that people need to understand the process. Mm -hmm. That you're not deciding that, hey, if we if you vote that you're building a new school. I think some people think that. That's not the case. You're just deciding, do we want to recommend it? Do we want to take it to the next step? Right. Correct. Or do we want to the town to right. so the people town. but that would be the easy thing to create a document that just talks about the process of what we're trying to go through and, and what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then and what the key decision points are and, and who makes those decisions. Where in here did we talk about the rationale for this? In other words, uh, things like other buildings deteriorating, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the usage of one building over another. Uh, yeah. Do you mean, do you mean would we set a, school, a formal criteria? School population, for example, mm -hmm. is uh, is fairly stable right now. Five years. Yeah, our projections indicate that we're in good shape in that respect. So, are you saying that we should have a separate conversation, just the board, to kind of establish some of the criteria by which, or I some of the issues we should make? Okay. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. I understand the what you're recommending. Well, it has to be intertwined in our conversations here. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you that one thing that Mansfield did when they asked questions in their surveys, they asked them based upon the options that they had out there. What do you feel about a new building? And you, more people were required to provide some rationale. I think okay. it's, some of it is opinion and some of it is going to be fact. So, but I think as you go through each option, you have to say, this is why it would make sense. This is why it would not make sense for every option. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other factor that is in the year, well, it's in the option, really, is the, the cost. Oh, yeah, that's a big part. That's not addressed. It, It'll be discussed, though. Uh, it's a huge part of it. You know, and all the figures that we have from Friar, that was some time ago, and, and those cost figures no longer are valid, really. I, mean, I, I think because, they're... Because they're of the, the increase in, in the costs and uh, things of that kind of thing. I think you're right that they're 
old, but it's better than the numbers we had to begin with. So there's still the amounts relative to one another. Yes. It, it, they're, they're good estimates, but that all they're going to be are estimates. And I suspect it, we might want to add on to here um, sometime later in the process, you know, May or June, asking for um, just an update. What would the real, you know, if we're going to create a tax implications report, we would need to know, you know, is this just increased by inflation? Are there some other factors? You know, cost of steel has changed because of well, that would tariffs or something. So, so to that, yes, I can tell you. I'm just saying that when we get further along, we'd want that as an option so that we don't get to September. We can't make a vote because we don't have the. You know, the architect we have used for the oil tank, mm -hmm. just like he did for the roof, he knows the cost of school construction. I'm sure he can give that to us. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. You know, the current cost okay. for school construction is, uh, you know, approximately mm -hmm. this amount. Uh, and, you know, you can figure, you know your square footage that you're allowed to do based upon your, your student population. And But when we do the, the town survey, where do you see who would create the town survey? I mean, I would, I would provide some feedback. I would definitely look at what Mansfield. Um, I only looked at Mansfield questions. I would like to see what their data look like coming back because I think that's important. If they didn't get the responses they were looking for, that was important information. Then maybe the question needs to be changed. But the town survey would have costs. I would assume that go to the shop. Mm -hmm. The people, how can they make a decision? Oh. Can give an opinion if they don't know the cost, right. right? So that would be based on. So we probably need that information report. earlier than I mentioned. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I can easily share that information too. I can just get the questions from Mansfield and share it with you, mm -hmm. and you can look at them and provide feedback. Okay. Any other thoughts? Yeah, the other thing on this is <clears throat> they go from February to November, um, September. Uh, the board either approves or disapproves being an option, whatever. But then, what, what happens? It goes to a referendum. But if you have a project like this, and because of, it involves the entire town, and quite a bit of money, and so forth, you have to sell it to the town. And I don't think, I don't think that, there's a lot of people going to be involved in this, very excited about it. And, just because we approve something here doesn't mean that it's going to pass the referendum, which means that we have, have to decide whether, <laughs> as a board, we want to spearhead uh, coffee hours or yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to sell it. Yeah, if you would. Or at least explain it to the town <laughs> so that they're well aware of what they're going to be voting on. It's a good point, Herb. I just added in October, I wrote final presentation of project that was approved because once you approve it, then you, you can just share the details of what you have approved and what your thoughts are. Right. That's a great idea. October is a good time for cider donuts. <laughs> so let's you and I, we can, uh, I'll bring the coffee and you'll bring the cider donuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think getting clarification about what a town referendum vote would actually be in November, if that would be a vote to establish a building committee, or if that is a vote, it's not, we're not far enough along for it to be a vote to spend X amount of money for the school. So the, the clarification about what, what if anything, like I said, this the is next wrong. vote would be. So, so, so yeah, just sure. clarification on their process, what their first town-wide vote was actually on would yep. be helpful. Remember, too, this has got to be something that we have to do together. You might have to have meetings that are just about this. Oh, yeah. Michelle. The, the, only, the other thing I would mention is you kind of need to think about a communication plan throughout the process. Like, like how, can the, how can you sort of keep the public up to date on what's going on and when? Yep. Because it's a great process, but it's not going to do us a lot of good if there are a lot of people out there not understanding where we are. And that was one of the questions they asked that, that I did see a response for, and it was, where are you getting your information? And 55% were word of mouth, which is really interesting, because mm -hmm. word of mouth is probably the most unreliable. So it's, that's a great, great problem. 
Did the architects offer us the opportunity to have everything up on the website? It is still up on their website. Yeah, so that would be one way, but for people to be aware of that. It, that's almost overkill. It is. It's so much. It's, it's overwhelming. It's a lot. It's, if you don't know what you're looking at and you don't understand the square footage and why, you know, Paul School would go from 60 to 30 if you build, what, what's yeah. that about? You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that go along with it. And that's, I think, why we tried to simplify it into a one-page document with the options. And then you can start to list out when you present an option, you could present, here's why. Almost needs a website or a page on it. As I said, Mansfield has yeah. a click that link and everything is right there. And I think that we would definitely do the same thing. And I think that that's February, that's starting with that yeah. right off about the process and everything. You want to have this started in January. And I changed my, mind. my apologies. <laughs> no, thank you. That, <laughs> we've got other stuff to do this uh -huh. week. Okay. Good. Moving along. Yep. Moving along. All right. So the curriculum update. Uh, we have the committees now, and I just put in my notes: Kiara, Elena, and Tracy. You're on curriculum, uh, and we want to start bringing some of that curriculum to the board for approval. Uh, use, I, this is a while back that uh, we had a couple people come in and present on curriculum and what they had written, it was some, some feedback was given. We want to start at the committee level first, um, and this would be Kristen Stevens and Erica Bouchard who would be presenting for Math, Science, Social Studies, and uh, LA, uh, Reading and Writing. And so they are in sync of how they've been writing curriculum, but it would be good for your feedback and to see it. Uh, and so you can also explain to other board members. It would start at that level and then it would come out to, you can decide how you want to approve curriculum. If you want to do it by grade level, um, if you want to do a bunch of grade levels at once, however you want to do it. Remember that curriculum is the plan that gets us our, our learning outcomes. It's, it's what we're teaching. It's, it's connected to the standards. Uh, and it's a really critical part to what we do in schools. Um, and we have some, some professionals that are helping along the way with that. So, do you have any thoughts of, of February? Right, if you want to email me some dates, Tracy and, and Kiara, that if you want to try and pick around a board meeting, if you, because it's we already have, a, a, I think, a policy committee meeting before the next board meeting. If you want to pick something, that would be really helpful. That's a different time. I'll work with you. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important for us just to get a kick off with them. And I'm so, sorry, who would be doing the presentation? For uh, I already talked to Kristen and Erica to pull together uh -huh. just their framework of how the curriculum is and written. And who are they? I'm sorry, Chris? Kristen is the literacy coach, and uh, Erica is the math interventionist who also is writing curriculum and supporting curriculum. For the most part, K-8 at this point, it's more uh, K-6 is what she's where she's. So Erica does math. Yeah. And you'll see that in the budget tomorrow that they were posted really at center school alone and that, that they are now 0.5 and 0.5 in both buildings. They work in both buildings. So um, I'll have Brenda get some dates, okay? Mm -hmm. School visits, Kiara, I have no idea what happened with my notes, but you said you couldn't do any of those dates or the date, one date I said I had you for, for doing the school visit, you couldn't do. I don't know if I wrote it wrong last meeting or what. No, no, no. It was, uh, um, we usually do our iReady testing mid-year, the week after, and this year they, they're doing it next week. Okay. And it's Monday through Thursday, uh, so I just can't. Yep. And it's the first thing in the morning, so I can't leave. And Ken will be calling you, by the way, because they're looking at iReady. Mm -hmm. Herb, you were scheduled for January 15th, Tuesday, January 15th, for, for a site visit. Really? Really. <laughs> um, but you would be alone at this point in time, so I don't know if it makes sense if you're able to do the 16th. And the times here, what we're looking at is 8 to 8.45 at Hall and then 9 to 9.45 at Center. <clears throat> it's approximate. Michelle and Elena were on January 16th. Yes. And Stephanie, Tracy, and Anne, I had you as the 17th. As a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you good with that? Mm -hmm. 
Crazy. What time was it? It'd be eight to nine forty-five. At Hall School. Yes, it would start at Hall School eight. And you all set with that? Yes. Okay. Thank you responded. Herb, does that work for you? Yeah, I'll have to adjust some stuff. Thank you so much. Then we only yeah. have to do two. Um, and Kiara, you might get a personal tour. <laughs> oh, that would be great. All right, we'll figure it out. No, I don't. I don't want to waste people's time, so it's okay. You can you can do an abbreviated tour. It's good to it's good it, to see. It is good to see what's going on. No, I just you know, I want to confirm. I want to confirm. Okay. CIP projects. Uh, I gave you an updated spreadsheet, and, and I hope that I made moves the way you wanted me to, because I had arrows all over my paper. I know that the HMS front entrance repairs was supposed to be moved with missing a comma, um, was moved from year three to year two. That was something you asked me to do, Steph. I did that, um, and we made the priority level medium. Um, the other thing was you would ask me to be consistent how with the amounts I requested everywhere on here I requested the full amounts um, and then in the project title it says if there was burning money allocated for something so if you look at the second one down CES heating project the full amount year one is 94,000 but there is already 59,000 from 1819 remaining okay so I, I was consistent about that um, or if it was already in CIP for another year, it, say, it states that as well. HMS boiler, 60,000 in 2021. It doesn't mean it's going to be there when they see it. But um, So this is submitted, and I also want to share with you the document. I just want to make sure clear to you because I was going to was the document that I submitted to you was my working document to share with you. There's actually a form that we have to complete that I tweaked. And now it's fillable. Thank you. Randy did a bunch of work on it. Um, but this form is basically what gets submitted. Mm -hmm. And I put pictures on some. This happens to be the, the CES roof low and middle and chip roof. Um, and it goes into their format. But it's basically the same text and information you saw when I gave you that worksheet. Okay? If you would like to see these, they're delightful. And those aren't the ones. It's just a different saw, format. It's the same information. The first time we, we looked at before you gave us this, you gave us I that gave, format. It's not. I it's didn't. Not. I gave you basically uh, just a Google Doc with project after project after project. Oh, that's right, yes. And then that's then transferred onto this. <clears throat> and you, you have to check with you know, the justification, provide the, the reasoning. All of that information was in your document already. And honestly, I don't think I'll do the same way next year. I think I'll do this the first time. Kind of so you've given this to CIP. Yeah. Yes, this was submitted. Did they approve it? Uh, no, we present. I present. This is your uh, presentation. To them. Correct. This Sorry. is what they got. The 25 projects with our priorities and information. Um, I think they just got it, and they. I believe on February 20 something. Uh, that's when I will present all these projects to them. Start early because it's not a small pile. It is not a small pile. There are some things that they've already heard about on there, which is good. Then. All right. Is there anything that you want me to adjust that I, I didn't do the way you wanted on there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Herb, you had mentioned the HMS sign is on my list here. That you had mentioned the HMS sign that's out front. I talked to Ken about it because it kind of bothered me as well because it was blank. Um, and then I realized Ken had submitted to me. A proposal to put a new sign up there and it was thousands of dollars and I said no. Um, the letters fall off the sign that's in front uh, so I need to talk to him. We're going to place a generic message onto the sign board because you can pack things in there. We can get something in there that will look presentable, you know, oh, whatever it is, something, you know, we'll figure something out. But it's, 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 the letters fall off. That's the reason it's not being used. So I wanted to share that. Money. It's only money, right? <laughs> uh, the email server crash. Uh, I will tell you that this is a big money issue. So the server that hosts our email, the library system, and our print servers. The print servers are what we how we print the schools to the copiers. 
they had a significant failure on December 18th. And this was an issue we've talked about a uh, single point of failure in the past. It is currently a single point of failures, failure setup. So if one thing goes, they all go. And so it failed. Um, one of the drives failed, and they tried to tweak it with another drive. That failed. So two drives, uh, you know, both, they both failed. Um, and it took a, signi a significant amount of time for custom computers, engineers, to repair. This was not a repair on site. This is all things they were doing on, on the server in the background and with Josh doing a couple things here, basically pressing, pre pressing buttons. Um, it's, it's a big deal. The, the file print server needed to be built from scratch right from the beginning on a different piece of hardware um, and the other items were, were recovered for backups. The, I'm sharing this with you because I think it's important. I don't know if you've seen our M-Core book or not. And if you haven't seen it, it's where we, we develop some of our uh, capital improvement projects. MCOR, a few years back, created a binder for us with all of our mechanical pieces that we have in the district, the age and serial number, the model, and its life expectancy. And then if they were going to repair it or replace it and its stage, is it in good shape or not? we probably need to do the same thing technology-wise. I was told, and I did not know about this prior to this, that um, custom computers had shared this, uh, some information with us in February of 2018, that this was, this was an issue. Um, I hadn't seen that before. I don't know if Jackie ever saw it or not. It doesn't matter. Um, and she probably did see it, but then saw the price tag. $49,000 to replace the old server and, and, and replace it so that it's not a single point of failure. And don't forget, this impacts the town as well. Um, and $25,000 to replace it and continue with your single point of failure, which to me is ridiculous. You shouldn't do. Uh, this is not in the budget. Um, I will tell you that I shared, Paul Johnson is our rep for custom computers, and I shared with him one of the pages from our, M our MCOR document and, and said, I want this for all of our technology equipment. Whatever server you have, I want to know the year, I want to know its life expectancy, I want to know if it's running right, I want to know if it was set up right, because uh, we're hearing some of the things that one of our servers was years and years and years ago um, may not have been set up the proper way. I'm asking for that information from custom computers because I think it's critical to your decision making about how you spend money and you want to know. The other piece to this is that um, we patched. We didn't replace. We, we did, uh, we, the two drives, believe it or not, I think were like $500, um, but they couldn't get the drives readily so they patched and they repaired. The two drives, will, they're going to give me a quote for to replace. It's not a lot of money, but again, it is a patch. It's a piece of duct tape um, that we need to consider in the future. And I'm looking at every form of revenue possible. We are looking at E-rate, which if you look at your, your phone bill, you pay when you pay your phone bill, a small portion of money goes into automatically goes back to schools and libraries, and there's a pool of money that you can apply for. Only certain things apply, just like the security grants. Only certain things apply, and it's anything that um, it's supposed to make schools and libraries basically, you know, obtain affordable telecommunications inter and internet, um, and you can qualify back as a reimbursement. We're in the process of doing that now for things we've already done, and this portion of this may apply or not, but we need to look at every way we can get a dollar back to start fixing some of these things. Questions about the email server failure? Not a small deal. You realize how much you communicate with your staff and townsfolk and uh, when you lose your email. Okay, moving along. Budget, workshop, dates, and times. Just making sure everybody has those scheduled in tomorrow. Nights is our first one. I apologize. I think I said it's at Center School to a couple people. It is at the town office building. It's here. We will be so doing. It's 
here. Is here okay. tomorrow night at six. Uh, so at six p.m. Six. And it's upstairs here. Oh, it's here. here. Yep. Yeah. And we will be doing uh, program one, two, and four. Program one is center school. Program two is fall school. And program four is transportation. Program one and two will take some time. Program four will not. It will be pretty quick because it's a contract and it pretty much is what it is. Um, I put this on the agenda tonight to make sure you had those dates, but also to tell you that uh, the budget right now, you have your budget books in front of you, and I have a letter that's part of the budget, um, and I would like to be able to pause the meeting, and I, I didn't send this to you ahead of time because uh, I want to send this out to try and encourage people to come out and share their thoughts one way or the other about what they're looking for. Um, and it's the letter that says to the citizens of Wellington. Generally, the superintendent writes a letter to the Board of Education. This letter, uh, and then sends it after the budget's approved. This letter is to everyone, Board of Education and um, citizens of Wellington. And I wanted to see if you were okay if I sent this out to folks tomorrow morning. So if you want to look at it, it's in this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, open your binder to like the second or third page. Yeah, my statement. You're mailing this out to her? Uh, if you allow me to, I will send it via messenger and post on our website. Just the letter. And the dates. Meaning, what's the MSN? Uh, it, it's how we can email out documents to community members. School members, I should say. School, uh, community. I was gonna say. school community. Yeah, school community. Yes. But this and then be. the citizen will be on the website. Mm -hmm. And how are they going to know? Now go ahead, Steph. You know, I'm just. Yeah, read it. You want us to read it? Yeah. Can we just kind of not yeah, discuss and. <clears throat> Side of the letter would be the calendar. Mm -hmm. 
thoughts, questions, comments, without going into great detail about the budget, what's on the letter. The question really is, this is this is my letter that will be in, in your it's in your binder already. It will be part of the binder. The question is, should I send this letter out tomorrow? and hope we would get some feedback in the public out. I think you would be I I cut Herb off a minute ago oh, and he started the question. question, so why don't you finish? You had started and I cut you off. So we'll start with that and then we'll trace it next. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so polite. Okay, Tracy. I was just saying in the interest of, of transparency as we've been trying to keep this is giving an opening before we start the process with dates so people can, I mean, it's the date, day of the meeting, but there's a few weeks to come this and is, hear about things. The dates have been in the digital backpack, but I think what is always hard is people don't know what to expect, and they find out afterwards and then they're responding to. Yeah. Um, I tried to give information and letter to, to let them know where, where my budget is at, and it's so that's, that was the reason for the letter, not just the dates. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to send this out, you know, even in form, right to the beginning. Um, another question I had on the second paragraph, the two people involved, have they been notified? Yes. Is the town email thing working now? to send it out to residents. I, I know no I haven't idea. received things as a resident. Is anybody else going to I have never, I haven't done that if yet, but I would like to. I mean, I get notifications. If you sign time. up, yeah. Okay, I I'll could try that. Up. Yeah, try that, because that would reach it, the non-school residents. It non only gets out to 436 people. Oh, that's oh really? really? So, yeah. Yeah. It's a start. We should use every avenue. avenue. So I would, if okay. I post this, I would use every every avenue I could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would go on our Facebook page. It would go on our, you know, just yeah. link. It would be in our digital backpack at the end of the week, but you know, the idea here is to get the more feedback I think for you, which is where, what ended up last year. You got a lot of feedback. Um, I think it's an important part of the process, uh, and I just think that you're in uncharted territory from the standpoint of you've had superintendents uh, pass budgets in several years and tell you at some point you're going to have to make a tough choice and you're there. So I think the feedback you had just um, said about the school facilities um, also applies to this that the process is important, that people understand the process. Um, we are all deep in the budget process because this is part of what we do, but for the average citizen they might not be aware of what the difference between a budget workshop is or the board of finance meetings and there some of the board of finance meetings are appropriations and some of them are you know the for them if they only can, if they have to hire a babysitter to come out to a meeting they need to have a sense of which meeting is most important for them to attend mm -hmm. which meetings will be um, available for them just to collect information and where they can provide feedback Will there be public speaking available at each meeting? You know, so the public comment. Yep. So a little bit more about the process, I think, also applies to this process. Just I'll like set the that as in, like that in the email portion. Yeah, or on the the dates because as you have you all of the dates page? on there, the page on the budget the, workshop calendar. Well, this is our budget workshop calendar, but it's not the process. When we're, we're, we're done on the sixth, it doesn't explain the rest of what happens. What you know, what other dates there are. I think we should explain the budget process entirely. Even if it may not have, we're not going to explain in great detail, but they should see that our decision on the 6th, or whenever that is, is not the final decision. As I see it, this is not our budget yet. No. This is superintendent and administrative budget. That's right. Or is it prepared? Mm -hmm. A lot of effort in, mm -hmm. a lot of work in putting it together. At some point, it will be our. Mm -hmm. Once we approve whatever we approve, then it's our budget. And it becomes the Board of Education's budget proposal to the Board of Finance once we vote on it. It's not a final 
approved budget that we move forward on because that happens after the Board of Finance has taken action. So I think that some people may not have clarification in the role of the Board of Education versus the role of the Board of Finance. And I think that it never hurts to provide some additional civics education to people to clarify. There are new people, new voters. My daughter's a new voter this year. She's never come to a Board of Education finance meeting. And for people who would have to vote on the school budget for the first time. But it's not the Board of Finance's budget. Not yet. It never is. It's it, always our budget. The it will be. The, the, fi the, final, no the final number when it comes back. Money. They can make recommendations, mm -hmm. I think, and we can change it, or we don't have to change it. In other words, you can stand behind whatever you right. present to them. Right. I what? Well, sorry, go ahead. But it, to my recollection, is it will be our budget. Well, Unless the superintendent, don't you be approved it? It's ours. Yeah, but last year we had to cut that 7000 remember? Right, so that was we don't have final control over the budget, is well, what they we're saying. Well, they can say anything they want in the Board of Finance. Right, and so they, they will, they it's our budget, but then they can they cut it. They have that power. They, they have the power over the bottom line. Right. And we're asking Correct. if they make suggestions, they don't tell us where to cut or anything like that. Right. Correct. Because right. they have, you know, the bottom line in their mind, you know, what they want, but mm -hmm. it's also what we want to. Right. So yeah. do you think maybe like a process section in the same page? So well, still <coughs> here's, here's, here's my recommendation. Yeah. If you're okay with me sending this along with the, the schedule, mm -hmm. I will email you in the morning with, okay. I'll do a write-up of the process, the entire process, where people are, are going to be able to do it. And if you're okay with the board chair approving what I write, you can obviously tweak and add then I will attach that as, as part of it so there's that'll be the email portion of the process and then they'll have my letter, the calendar, and the entire process together. And so will you add the, the date when it's presented to the Board of Finance? And yeah, the, I just, for you, I didn't put also. the entire calendar on, but yeah. I will add the entire calendar for that. Excellent. That right down to the board. Yes. The yes. Yeah. Thank you. So you don't have to vote on it, but I just want to make sure there's no one. Was there any any feelings about um, not sending this out to the public? I didn't hear anyone speak against it. Okay. Are you going to mail this out, or are you going to? He said yeah. he said every avenue. So every avenue, I can. No, uh, not actual mail. He's he not he's not going to mail it to every mailbox. Mail so right. And I won't be hand delivering it. But you could <laughs> print out a few and put them. You know, on on the bulletin boards, and you know, it's yep. possible to, you know, for, yes. there, for those few people who are paperwork. First thing in the morning. Thank you. Okay. Next item is the financial report. Is that your package? Yes. I told you last month oh, um, I'm so sorry. Didn't get that this was an extremely tight budget. And I just had a meeting with the finance committee and shared why um, I am going to freeze this budget. Uh, I am going to put something out. I've already talked to administrators about it. Uh, normally, when you see 3.1 percent remaining in your budget, it's May or it's June, and we have 3.1 percent left in our budget, and it's January. And so. There's just going down most of most of what you see there is salaries that are encumbered. Sometimes some of that money comes back in, into the balance remaining. Uh, but for the most part, I've asked them to encumber, uh, and them being the business office, every, encumber everything that you know you're going to have to do, so we can see what's left. Um, I've consulted Don on this. Uh, She's probably tired of seeing me, um, and I consulted Jackie on this just because she knows the budget extremely well. Um, she, this is her budget um, that she you know, presented to you, obviously, um, and it's, it's, it's very, very tight. I will tell you that there's a, a few things. One is transportation. That is not going to be a negative number. Donna is telling me that that is uh, Region 19 we're waiting for a diesel reimbursement there. Uh, so that will end in the positive. Um, the money that is in system-wide support, the 36000 is, is probably going to be lower because I have new business on here for you tonight. 
is to approve the custom computers contract for six months. Uh, about sixteen thousand dollars will come off of that thirty-six thousand, which brings that lower. Uh, the other thing I'll tell you is, and you know this, is that special ed. Uh, can go up and down significantly and right now special ed is operating uh, in the negative it doesn't show it on here but you should know that when it says there's only six thousand dollars left in the special ed budget that's not covered at this point in time um, that could be an outplacement move in it could be a change in transportation it could be uh, some a student needs a one-to-one -one pair that was not budgeted for there's lots of reasons um, but that's one that um, I'm also asking the new director, uh, nothing like walking in and being asked by a superintendent to evaluate your program fast, financially. Uh, I'm asking her to look at everything, every avenue. She worked in, had three different budgets for three different districts. Uh, I want to know if we can find some savings. Uh, the other thing is money, the other reason that that account is going to be lower is remember that we had uh, expected about $30,000 I think in Medicaid money this year and that was something we were forced to do that we thought we were going to get that money and we were not and it's just based upon the needs of the kids uh, we're not going to get that money it's, it's, we got about a thousand dollars and it made sense we were spending more hours uh, of per staff to do that and that's why we voted to get away from Medicaid so that's not coming in uh, excess cost money that comes back to support that you have about forty thousand dollars that you applied in this budget I hope we see that amount because if we don't, we're just, that hole is even bigger. Um, and again, excess cost is then anything that's four and a half times over your per, per pupil. And uh, you know, if you don't have, if the student cost exactly four and a half times, you don't get anything back. It's anything above that. So um, I did. I am going to freeze the budget. Uh, I will hold on until I have a, a good sense that um, number one I can open it back up and we'll prioritize any spending at that point in time or two uh, it will remain frozen and uh, if, if we uh, can't use the, the remaining balance to cover what's there uh, we have to go back and figure out a way to to cover whatever's there you remember that I went to the Board of Finance this year, when at the end, at the very start of this year, and asked for them to put one percent into the non-locked-in fund, and they said no. That could have been applied to this. We currently have about twenty-nine thousand four hundred dollars in our non-locked-in fund that could be applied um, to try and solve some of the, the uh, negative numbers and, and really coming out of a couple of programs. Questions for me? Sorry, that's not good news. I think you just saw the budget document, and that's not good news either. So uh, I will keep keep you, uh, you know, as I always do. I'll keep you informed here at the, at the meetings of where it's at, and uh, you know, something changes. And again, I was just looking at a grant from uh, the Gates Foundation. Connecticut doesn't apply. So trying to find money wherever we can and, and apply it. Unfortunately, that's not, not good. Okay. Um, I just noticed on our current agenda that nowhere do we have the approval of the minutes from the December 11th meeting. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know whether... Uh, just uh, got okay. I think I crossed them off in my draft and that's my apologies. Do I have a motion from the floor to add that into the agenda here at this point before we move to committee reports? I move to add it into the agenda before committee reports. Thank you, Steph. Do I have a second? Thank you. All those in favor of adding the minutes approval to the agenda? Signify by saying on. The minutes of December 11th. The minutes of mm -hmm. December 11th. That should be a final motion. When we approve it, it would be, but I will add that. That's fine. Friendly, is that a friendly minute? Yep. Okay. Okay. Sure. The minutes of December 11th, 2018, signified by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. okay. Passes unanimously. 
Okay, so now that it's added to the agenda, we will vote on the approval of the minutes. So um, we have in our packet as attachment two, the minutes are of our December 11th, 2018 meeting. Um, so if someone who was present. I'll move that uh, we approve the minutes of December 11th. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Kiara. Any questions? Issues? No? Okay. All those in favor of approving the December 11th, 2018 minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Okay. Moving on to committee reports. Okay. Oh, well, we just yeah. the finance, finance committee just met. Finance just met. Um, I just shared the eighteen you, yeah, nineteen. So, so I just shared the eighteen nineteen budget. Gave yeah. them more information, uh, and also talked about nineteen twenty, my proposed budget, uh, and also shared with them contracts which are coming up next. In the okay. Agenda. Um, and I did mention we have the document in our packets with who's on which committee. The policy committee will be setting a date for later in January, but we won't be setting that date until next week. So we'll move ahead with that soon, because I know that we keep coming back to that. There's a few items still left on that. The policy committee will also plan on meeting for the hour before the February regular board meeting, so on the 12th, plan to come in at 6. I think Craig keeps emailing me more policies. So, <laughs> so we better keep moving or we're not going to catch up. I hear you. Okay, moving on to eight new business, custom computers contract. Okay, so we, uh, we have been working with custom computers since about June of 2014. You signed a contract with them. I signed a contract with them. You approved it uh, for a six-month contract from July 1, 2018 to December 31st. Uh, 2018. Uh, we did a six month contract with them and uh, we are up for another six month contract just to continue services. Exactly what we've been doing. Um, and so this company, Custom Computers, is it's an example of when you think about the email crash, if we had had one person here, uh, we would have been down for a long time and we would have spent a fortune paying for support from someone that doesn't know our system. Um, and so basically this is a joint um, it's a shared service between the town and the Board of Ed uh, and the contract for custom computers is a six month contract that's on here is January 1, 2019 to January 30th, 2019. The Board pays 47% of the contract, the town pays 53%. The board's portion for the six-month contract is $34,131.40. Um, they provide support to both the town office building and schools. They use a ticketing system. So when we put in an email to Wellington Help Desk, uh, they can fix our computers. They, I can be anywhere wireless, and they can get on my computer. They have to ask, ask access first, obviously. Um, but they can fix your computer. And if they cannot do it, then we have a person on site, a local technician, who's five days a week. He was also responsible for power school, which is a significant task. Uh, it's our student operating system. And that's a system that we provide all our state reporting through. Um, and then we also have another technician two days a week that's part of this service. So we have 1.4 people for the town and schools to do all of that work. All right, and that's what this, this portion is for. Um, their support, obviously, is, you know, they have an army behind them. When we put in a ticket, we can escalate it if it's something that they, you know, on-site can't fix. They have a team of engineers that attacks it. When we had the email server go down, uh, I know Tristan Wadi quite well now because he was the senior engineer <laughs> that had my personal phone number, and we were calling each other at all hours to uh, keep me apprised of what was going on until we had fixed. <coughs> So uh, they also monitor our laptops and desktops and servers and switches and firewalls. They do all of that for us, um, and it's a lot of work. So again, this is another company that, you know, with this contract, we're hoping that maybe we can apply for E-rate, that we can get some money back on. Some of the services that they provide are reimbursable. We will uh, 
we're working on that system. Um, and so you would need a motion to approve a six-month contract extension uh, at a cost of $34,131.41 to custom computers to continue these services. And you're going to ask me, Phil, you just said we're on a budget freeze. And I told you that in system-wide support, there's $36,985. I would be taking $15,820 out of that account. That is um, the remainder of the money in the budget that was uh, meant for custom computers. The balance of approximately $24,000, I think is what it is in my notes, would be applied from a, a, a REAP grant that, I'm sorry, the balance would be $18,000. I apologize. $18,000. Um, and there's about, uh, there would be about $6,000 left in that reframe. Uh, the money's there, and this is a, uh, I'll be honest, this is something that uh, is critical to maintaining uh, our, our systems. If this, you know, our, our technology systems break, we don't have any support. They are our company. And you said the 18000 is from? Uh, 18,000, hold on, that was in one of these binders here, sorry. It's from REIT, is that what oh, I... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's from REIT. Do it's you, the REIT, REIT, REIT is Rural program? Education uh, Appropriations Program, I think, is what it is. Uh, it's basically for rural districts to uh, try and get things that you wouldn't other, otherwise be able to afford in a smaller district. I'll give you the seems to qualify. Uh, <laughs> yes, I will give you the example for Greenwich. If they raise their um, their no rate by one, one, they raise about thirty million dollars. If we raise our mill mill rate by one, we raise about four forty. Four hundred forty thousand dollars. Okay. So Not just millions. to give you a. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Do I have a motion? On the I just wanted to clarify that it's a six-month contract. I think the dates it's it's uh, through June. June thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Yes. I make a motion that we approve the contract for the name of the customs customs, customs computer. computer until June of June thirtieth. June thirtieth of two thousand nineteen. And the amount of. And the amount of thirty-four thousand. Thousand one hundred thirty-one dollars and forty-one cents. Thank you. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Thank you. That was the easier part of the two there. So <laughs> thank you for getting the number right. Um, additional questions, concerns, thoughts? Yeah, but once this contract is up, is it in the budget? Or another? Yes. Mm -hmm. I budgeted. Uh, between the, the full contract for the town and the schools is about, I think, 145000 uh, And we would pay 47% of that, mm -hmm. and that full amount is in the budget. Okay. Is that one of the things that went up, like many other things, that it went created up. homes in the budget? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Okay. No additional questions? Then I'll move us to a vote. All those in favor of approving the motion to approve the custom computers contract um, in the amount of thirty-four one thirty-one and forty-one cents. Signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, okay. Uh, passes unanimously. Sorry, I wasn't quick enough to turn my head, but <laughs> okay, moving on to the second item of new business, the security. So this is the security camera. This is a CIP project. This is not in our operating budget. This is uh, CIP capital improvement um, approved $23,500 for 1819, uh, and the and they put 26,000 in year two, uh, and so basically what we did was you know the security cameras are, are basically from eBay. They are not quality, and to fix them is it's really hard to replace a broken camera. They, it doesn't talk to the system. Um, there were blind spots, they're not user friendly, it just, it's just it's a real problem and security cameras are critical to what we do. Uh, just, you know, you wouldn't believe when I have the cameras next to my desk when I'm working what, what we watch. You can see things uh, and you can try and catch things before that becomes an issue. Um, our, we, uh, per the policy, I have to get three quotes. We weren't sure if it was going to be over $25,000 or more, 
So we got three quotes. quotes. Um, I reviewed these quotes with the Finance Committee. Custom Computers came in at $47,973.10. Johnson Controls was $29,750 plus exterior cameras. So I just don't want to make sure that that's not in there. And then Security Technologies came in at $28,126. So this uh, motion would be for the low bid for Security Technologies. That is their business. That is who we currently call when we have a camera issue. But um, CIP only approved $23,500. However, I told you last meeting that we received the uh, security grant for $18,262. That's coming back to the Board of Ed budget because it was pay, um, items paid for in the Board of Ed budget. Mm -hmm. And so if you would apply the balance of uh, 5000 whatever it is, uh, dollars to basically get the balance to uh, pay for the cameras. These cameras would be for center school only, uh, and this system would allow, if I was out of district, I can see it on my phone, the administrators would have it. We do not have that capacity right now. So um, we will also, once uh, we get this money back, I also applied for more security reimbursement, for security grant reimbursement based upon this purchase as well. You can only get money back if you if it qualifies though and this qualifies, uh, if they do another round of security plan. Does yeah. Hall have any equivalent camera set up? Or? So they, their quote is higher and that is what's in our CIP um, request. Okay. It's in there and we would, have, we would basically, you know, it would be my uh, thought to apply the extra 13,000 that we are receiving back from the security grant to offset that CIP project, because it has to go to a, a security project, yeah. um, and bring that quote down. Are those transferable if we do end up? Cameras are, wiring is not. No, okay. They, you, they won't pull wire and, and reuse wire, because it's different lengths and stuff. But we could reuse so the cameras. We could reuse yeah. cameras. Okay, thank you. So you need a motion to um, award the contract to Security Technologies for $28,126. If you so choose. I moved the appropriate uh, money for cameras for center school from was it consumer security technology. Technology. In the amount of twenty six. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the amount of twenty eight thousand one hundred twenty six dollars. Second. Okay. Additional questions, comments? Okay. Now we don't okay. want to add to that. Can we add? Yes. There are quite a few uh, cameras involved in this. Yeah, we asked about that. Just knowing where. We were thinking with if if there's a building project, if there's a change, if we move someplace else, if we you know renovate it, and they can add to the system, and the whole school system, if we want this company again to be a little bitter, you can't guarantee it, but because the systems would talk, <clears throat> and so that, that but you can move them if you were say you renovated center school, you can move the cameras from hall and put them into center for. Right but you on your uh, iPhone, you can monitor this. Not yet. Not yet. But in the building, we have monitors also. That are just watching the cameras? Yeah. No. There's there's a few people that have them at their desk, uh, and we all watch it at different times. And it's not that you're. It's it's really interesting because it's not that you sit there and watch the cameras, but when you're in the majority of the day, they're still. And when you see movement, for example, yesterday, a white van pulled up to the front doors of Center School, and I was doing some budget work, and it caught my attention. I looked up, and then I saw the delivery of a fruit basket to our new principal. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the type of thing. You put your, your heart that, was pounding and your adrenaline kicked in. Absolutely. Absolutely. But in the building, there are... <laughs> Their, the secretaries have them at their desks, so they're watching. Yeah, and they, they that's what they're looking at when they're buzzing people in. They have a speaker system to talk. It's all part of the security system. Mm -hmm. Might be a good thing for us to look at on our school visits. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Seeing no additional comment, uh, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of approving the contract for security technologies in the amount of 28126, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Okay. You must be tired of hearing me talk tonight. It is. <laughs> uh, the last section of our budget is again present to speak. So we would welcome your comments. We ask that you uh, identify yourself and your address so that we know who you are and it can be added to the minutes. And we ask that you keep your comments to five minutes each. Mr. Belair. Good evening, everybody. Randy Belair, 170 Village Hill Road. Uh, Phil, I'd like to ask the custom computer contract uh, folks. You asked, if I understood you correctly, you asked them to do sort of an inventory of all the technology in the building, citing the lifespan, the useful life of the servers and whatnot. Is that correct? So we've asked that the present to speak not be questions because if we get into a dialogue, gotcha. it's going to be a big thing. If you have questions that we can answer either after the meeting or via email or something, yeah. um, we will take note of that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Did you have a question or concern in particular about that? Did you? Okay. Don't just like some more data on when to expect the results of, a, of the inquiry. Ah, okay. That's, that's useful. You just come because you love us. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It's the entertainment. <laughs> Slow on Netflix. <laughs> well, Don was on and dying, so we got it. Right. <laughs> Okay, so since we have finished present to speak, um, we'll move to board comments. Um, clarification, again, the section of board comments, just like present to speak from the public, is we're not going to have questions and answer. This is not a dialogue section. So um, for us to all make our comments or not as we choose to, if you have additional questions that you want to follow up with any one of us, you can do so after the meeting. But this is just an opportunity for us to have our comments. So. I think, Steph, we're going to start with you, because I just okay. started at the end. So we'll Good. Go I actually have one in, in my yeah. head. Um, from, I mean, there's so many things we could have. But um, I'd just like to compliment uh, Rebecca for the minutes, because they are so organized and clear, and it was a complicated meeting, as they all are. And I'm, I'm just appreciative, because I've seen many kinds of minutes rolling around, particularly in public life. And it's, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to read something that's that accurate and carefully done. OK, we're going to go clockwise. I want to congratulate Patty on her retirement and hope she enjoys her freedom and um, <laughs> being able to spend her days as she will. And also welcome Rich and Marcia to our work yeah. I concur with both of you. Um, Pat Lockton, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for our service. And thank you, Phil, for all the information, for your talking to us. Mm -hmm. Tracy? Um, I just like to commend Hall School, I think, for I've attended two, I've attended many assemblies over time. And the two that I've attended this year, one was a success. Success Assembly and one was the Veterans Assembly. I walked out and said, wow, I'm really, I felt very um, uplifted by the energy in the room at both of those ceremonies, those assemblies, even though the Veterans was very moving in a different way, but I felt uplifted by our students and what they did and the teachers and that everything was just a very happy, well working machine. And I just want and I, I meant to send an email to Ken and I haven't had a chance yet just to say I really I really like what I'm uh, the way I feel when I leave one of those assemblies. And and they've always been about um, you know uh, celebrating our students, but there's just a different energy that I'm feeling this year. Thank you. Kurt? Yeah, I Thank Patty for her years of service. Very much appreciated. Yeah. Also, I want to thank the superintendent for his presentation tonight on multiple items. I put a lot of work in on it. And also, I have no chance to look the budget when we get there. I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. You know, in that regard. Thank you. 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 Thank
uh, it is our budget, and eventually, and uh, we can make changes, I believe, if, if we feel that it's necessary. Okay. Well, um, I want to thank Phil for his attention to the public process, something I'm uh, passionate about, and I appreciate the fact that you are both looking at the facility study and the um, education budget with an eye to getting input from the public, and I think that um, both of those are essential to making sure that um, we're representing what people want. So thank you to that. Thanks to Patty. Um, we'll look forward to working with her for a few more months. And welcome to Rich and Marcia and uh, getting things off on a good start. Um, thank you all. We will see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. in this room, not at the library. Okay, and the meeting, uh, do we need to have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, and it is 8.32. Excellent, thank you. Do you want to set any committee meetings before you go? It's I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait until Elena's back to do the policy committee if we can. So yeah, she's actually on the